everybody, it's Margaret and welcome to my channel, Texas Gal Treasures. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you five plus some extra things to avoid if you are just starting out selling jewelry. This is one of the questions I get a lot or I see a lot um, from people in our group, Texas Gal Jewelry Lovers, and also messages I get. Um, a lot of people are interested in starting selling jewelry because there's a lot of positives and pros to it but a lot of people don't know where to start or what to just straight avoid especially if you're starting out so I was going to share with you five things to definitely avoid if you are starting out um, and then I'll share a few extra tips at the end so make sure you stay tuned at the end and make sure you watch and see if there's any tips that you might have or things that you would suggest for people to not pick up uh, and leave a comment down below because those are always good to know um, so <laughs> yeah and I am live so hi everybody in the chat hi Jill Patty Debbie hi Delinda and Esme and Julie and Ginny she says I'm not new but I can sure learn something new today <laughs> yeah and and again check the comment sections after if you're watching uh, live then we'll, um, check the the live feed so that you can see that so okay let's get started some of these you may already know but they might be useful for you all right here we go let's see so my first tip if you are new selling jewelry is to avoid broken jewelry. It may seem like a no-brainer, but a lot of times you might pick up something um, and think, oh, you know what, I can think, maybe I can fix this, right? And then it sits in your office or your workroom or wherever you keep your jewelry and it sits there forever. How do I know? Because I have a bunch of broken stuff that I thought, maybe I could fix this and then it just never I never got around to it so there are our we do have friends in our jewelry group and that sell jewelry that are really good at um, fixing broken jewelry and can can do this with no problem but I I'm personally not one of them and I often would get ambitious and think that I could but I can't um, or I just don't have time to anyway now there are minor repairs that I can make for example if a chain is kind of like come off and it's just like a jump ring that needs to be closed back up that's easy but something like this in this picture where it's like totally needs to be restrung while it might not be that hard to do personally I just never do it so all right next I I'm still talking about broken jewelry here but I wanted to show you that just in case you do end up with a lot of broken jewelry there are people that sell broken jewelry lots on eBay and as well as on Etsy I have sold a broken jewelry lot I can't remember if it was on eBay or Etsy so but it can tend to sit a little bit um, and they may not sell really fast but if you so if you end up with a ton don't you know don't despair there's still a chance to sell it uh, because crafters use it so I just pulled up a few different of those and then um, I did also pull up, you know, broke crafts that people do because there are friends that are crafty that take those broken jewelry pieces and make them into other things. Again, I wish that I could, but I'm like the epitome of the Pinterest fail, so not I. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, yay! Okay, Patricia Armstrong says just sold a tie clip for $24.99 plus shipping. Oh yeah, and that that was my gateway drug or my gateway jewelry into selling jewelry where it was men's accessories, so definitely. Um, the auction was really good. Speaking of the auction, um, Cindy Loves Jewelry has an auction tonight. She was the one, um, the lady that called the auction for me. And I do have another one Thursday night. So if you're, if you're interested, come hang out. Okay, number two. Second thing, hang on, let me move this, this chat up so you guys can see what the new, hang on, there we go. Hello, Maggie Doodle. <laughs> All right, so next up, hang on, I think some of my chat's not showing up. I see it over there, not over here. Oh yeah, that's a good idea, Jenny. Um, okay, so next up is peeling faux pearls. And I actually have an example of one here. I have I have quite a few. So this is not exactly a faux pearl, but just beads in general. If you see like the, um, the coating is like peeling off, then give it a pass. If you've got it, I mean, I guess put it in a craft lot. I don't know, like who's... I haven't done enough research to know if there are people that buy peeling beads or faux pearls. I don't know. So um, that would be something that I would give a pass on. May And again, some of these to you guys may seem very um, obvious, but it's not obvious to everyone. Oh, oh, I forgot I had this example. This was an example of a, a necklace that I had that I got in this last jewelry jar 
ah, where's my camera? That's broken, and I, I'm never gonna re, I'm never gonna fix it. I just know that. I know that about me. You've got to know your own limitations. Okay. Um. Oh, cool, fat Patty. I'll look. I'll check and see. <laughs> All right. So peeling, um, faux pearls. That was my next one. And next up, that's another picture of them where they're like chipping and peeling, and maybe some of them would look nice. And that's, that's another clue, too. Like, even if you see that they're knotted, if you see any kind of peeling, they're not going to be real pearls anyway, right? Um, so, no. All right. So, then next, um, I have jewelry that is missing stones. So, this could be, you know, brace. I, don't have, I thought I had an example here, but I, I just realized I don't. So, bracelets or, or rings or things like that that are missing stones. And, again, I know that some of our friends are really good about, you know, replacing little rhinestones and crystals and things. I know that I am not. So generally, I if I see that it's missing a stone, I generally pass on it. There might be exceptions, for example, like if I saw a really high-end like brooch or something like that that was missing a stone, I might pick it up anyway. Um, but there, there's, there's always exceptions to the rule, so that would be the exception for me. It would have to be something really high-end that I thought, you know, either I would fix or it wouldn't affect the value that much, you know. Um, and again, another exception would be if I saw a sterling silver ring or a gold ring missing a stone, I'm going to pick it up if the price is right because that's something that you I put in my scrap bag. I can save it for later for selling. Um, all right. So, gosh, we're flying through these quicker than I thought, but that's good because I have some extra, extra tips at the end. Um, so missing stones. Okay, and my next one is... Um, knockoffs and there's a lot of them out there and I know especially if you're beginning you may not know and you may not know all the rules about knockoff jewelry I know from personal experience because I made this mistake I picked up a Chanel brooch maybe it was two or three years ago uh, and I knew it was a fake but I didn't know that it was not okay to sell it I, I know now better I way know better and I know you know, you, you never know till you learn it, right? So I I put it up, and I even put in the, the title, you know, it's a fake, fake Chanel brooch. And uh, so I got, I got, it got pulled down, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so don't do that. <laughs> and there is a, an, um, an article here, this is on Extra Petite, and she goes through ways to identify a fake Chanel brooch. Now this could be for Chanel, for... Hermes, or I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that, but any jewelry brand, you know, to find out if it's a fake. So definitely do your homework to find out um, if it, there are good fakes and there are bad fakes. So yeah, just make sure you check it out. Yeah, you bought many knockoffs in the beginning. Yeah, and the thing is, like, there's so much information out there to to check it out. And then in the group. Te uh, Texas Gal Jewelry Lovers, you can definitely drop in a picture and say, hey guys, I got this, what do you think? And if you don't know where to look, you know, e either somebody already knows or they can point you in the right direction to um, find out on your own. So another couple of things that I've got here, these are the bonus ones. Hi in the chat if I didn't get to say hi to you, thanks for coming to hang out. Um, so another couple of things that, hang on, okay. Another couple of things that I wanted to share with you that are, well, some of them are borderline. One of them, this is from the jewelry jar too, is is dirty jewelry. <laughs> and believe me, there is dirty jewelry out there. Um, if you are, are like me, I'm not going to clean it. I, I don't have, I've got plenty of other things to list. And unless it's something that's worth a bunch of money, um, I'm not going to clean it. So like this is something just happened to be in the jar and it's a really dirty gross necklace that I will never clean. So it will probably end up in just like a craft lot or something like that because I wouldn't put it in a mystery box for somebody because that's no fun. Um, nobody wants to get that, I don't think. So it will probably end up in a craft lot where people can use and take apart and do the crafty, wonderful things that they do. Um, so that's one thing. Another thing is watches. I have been picking up watches um, there's that beeping again. Um, these ones were all in the jar that I just got, but generally, like, if I saw these in a jewelry case at Goodwill or a thrift store, I wouldn't have picked them up, you know, like Geneva brand. 
Um, but that is to say, don't, don't be afraid to try. If you see something that looks pretty awesome, you know, and it's a couple bucks and you want to try it out, you know, pick it up and do some research. That's how you learn, right? Um, so, oh, I never did my fifth one because that was, I jumped into something else. So I'll, I'll save this one for the end. But my, my fifth tip technically was supposed to be um, what to avoid is fear. So don't, uh, don't, don't be afraid to start. Don't have that failure to launch, that failure to try, um, because there are things that you're going to pick up that end up being like a dud, uh, and you thought, oh, this is going to be good, and it's not. Believe me, we have all been there. Um, so don't be afraid to start. Don't be afraid to try something if you're not sure about it. You know, like our, this, uh, I still have my jewelry jar from yesterday sitting here. So like I would probably have, you know, picked this stuff up by itself. Um, it's not something I've ever sold before, but I think it's unique enough that I was like, okay, I'll give it a try, you know. Um, so again, there's, you know, our group is there to come and ask questions and say, what do you guys think about this? Or there's lots of research to be done online. Um, oh yeah, yeah, lots of knockoffs and jewelry and watches for sure. So that being said, I have been collecting watches because I'm determined to learn more. And so I, these ones will just go into my basket full of watches for us to do research on. My son wants to learn more about them. So there's that. And then another thing which you may avoid as a new um, seller, and it's, it's jewelry that has like worn, the um, finish has worn off. And I say this with a, with a asterisks. Um, because like this particular ring, I'm not, I mean, I'll probably try to sell it, but I have sold rings that were really cool looking here, like a really big statement ring that was just amazing. And then the back part of it was like this, where the finish was worn off and it looked kind of like, mm, maybe no. Um, but I just wanted to encourage you that if you find a ring that looks awesome in the front, but is like this in the back, um, it might, you know, could still sell for, for a decent price because this is the part that most people see, right, when, when they wear it. It might deter a few, few buyers, but others it may not. So, okay, let me see if I got all my notes done. Um, but, yeah, I just want to say, give you encouragement if you're starting to, you know, try something new. Maybe pick up something that you wouldn't normally pick up to see if it's a win or not. So, yeah. Okay, again check the comment section, check the chat, because we've got lots of awesome people here share, um, sharing ideas. Uh, check the comment section to see. And you guys watching now, what, when this video renders and it is um, comments are open, go down there and leave a comment, uh, giving somebody else a tip about something to avoid or something that they should definitely be looking for, because we can all chip in together and help each other get out there and find cool jewelry to, to resell. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay, uh, thanks, everybody, for coming to hang out, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye, everyone. I'm stopping. <laughs>